Welcome back. We'll now go on to the next Community of Bellingham City Council, which is Community Economic Development, chaired by Councilmember Vargas. Thank you, Mr. President. We have one item in front of us today, and I am joined by Council Members Barker and Murphy. We have the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. Uh, Planning and Community Development will provide an update on the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report from this time forward called CAPER. Uh, covering the period from July 1st, 2016 to June 30th, 2017. The report covers housing and services program spending and accomplishment. The CAPER is required by HUD to look back on the past year's performances and progress meeting consolidated plan goals. The city also uses the CAPER to report on progress toward accomplishing goals set out in the 2012 Housing Levy Administrative and Financial Plan. And with that, I'm gonna turn over to Samia Lutz, who is gonna share the report with us. Thank you. Thank you, Samia Lutz, Housing and Services Program Manager with Planning and Community Development. I will try to go through this quickly for you. Uh, we're just highlighting a few of the projects in the CAPER. We're not gonna go through all the details in the report that's in your packet. Materials start on page 25 for you. This is required by HUD, but it also includes our home fund or housing levy dollars. Uh, it does not focus on the projects you saw back in May as part of the action plan that started this current HUD year, starting in July. It's a look back on that period you mentioned, and performance is viewed against both the things set out in the consolidated plan, which was developed in 2012, uh, began in 2013, and the seven-year housing levy. This is just a reminder of where we are with our federal funding. We get about 1.1 million a year, consisting of about 700,000 in community development block grant appropriations and uh, about 400,000 in home investment partnership program funding. That's remained flat the last couple of years and of course is quite uncertain going forward. So to zero in on leveraging, um, you can see along the left-hand side of this chart are the categories that are outlined in uh, your administrative and finance plan. And you can see that it varies by program. Uh, the rental housing development is perhaps obviously the place that we leverage the most funds with all that new development coming in. Uh, private funding that's leveraged typically is bank financing through low-income housing tax credit programs other uh, bank financing or through um, philanthropic dollars. There's also sometimes housing trust fund state dollars in that as well. And sort of on aggregate, if you look at $1 of leverage of, sorry, levy funding that we might put into a project, we leverage over $12 of other funding. So I'm gonna go brief, briefly through some highlights in the different programs. So under production of housing, this is a project that was completed, that was highlighted in the plan. This is Zil Villa Santa Fe, developed by Catholic Housing Services. It was formerly referred to as Bakerview Family Housing. It consists of 50 apartments for low-income families. They're all two and three bedroom apartments. They're for folks who earn at least some of their income through the farming or other natural resource industries in our area. And 37 of the units here are reserved for those who earn under about $2,800 a month. 13 of the apartments are reserved for those earning under about $1,700 a month, and that's assuming a family of four. The city put in 1.7 million about to this project. It's a total project cost of about $15 million. Another one I wanna highlight, this was committed to during the CAPER period. This is uh, the Bell Tower building, which is purchased and developed by Lydia Place. Uh, the city put in about $336,000, much smaller type project. Uh, total project cost for this was over 800,000. We focused, of course, just on the residential portion. This is a mixed use situation, but the downstairs has five units reserved for those exiting homelessness. And the folks living here are targeted toward pregnant individuals or those with young kids below three years old. And it's operated as a permanent supportive housing. Uh, so there are a lot of supportive services that go along with it. 
So the caper also shows a commitment to the 22 North project, which is currently under construction, as well as a number of projects in the preservation category, uh, including a second shelter for domestic violence sexual assault services that's under development now that will house 14 victims of DV. Uh, also an opportunity council fourplex for families exiting homelessness that needs uh, substantial rehabilitation and our ongoing city home rehabilitation program and the Opportunity Council's manufactured home repair program that we contribute to in partnership with them. And the levy tracks the goals for those together. Production and preservation are looked at together. And so this is a snapshot of where we are on those seven year goals. If you look at those under contract, we're surpassing the goals. Um, those that are not are actually completed and folks are living in them, um, 309 total for those two programs. So moving on to the home buyer program, this is in partnership with the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. It's divided into two separate programs, one referred to as the restricted program in partnership with Colson Community Land Trust, the other referred to as an unrestricted program in partnership with local banks. Uh, you can see that through the restricted program, most of the additional assistance we've provided for new families moving into existing homes that are already part of Colshan's inventory, but in need of additional down payment assistance dollars. In the unrestricted program, we've gotten mostly new inventory coming in through that. And just a snapshot here of where we are. Uh, this is a tougher, uh, things have gotten tougher since we set these goals in 2012. Cost of housing has risen significantly since that time, uh, yet incomes have remained flat. So that gap between what folks can afford and what housing costs are is much larger, um, yet we have a specific um, amount that we've maxed, um, said that we can contribute for each each uh, down payment assistance um, dollar figure for each household. So we're not able to uh, help as many people as we anticipated being able to help through this program, but we're still um, on track and have accelerated it through this partnership with the Housing Finance Commission. The Community Facilities Program, this is a completed project from last year in partnership with Unity Care Northwest, uh, their dental clinic serves about 6,000 low-income cl clients annually, uh, both adults and children, through 12 new clinic rooms. This program is funded only through community development block grant dollars. We put 225,000 to this particular project. Um, we also committed funds during the CAPER year to the Opportunity Council Drop-In Center to improve the safety and the service delivery of the, pro the programs that they housed through that, including the Homeless Service Center. Moving to the Rental Assistance and Supportive Services Program, uh, this shows how we're far surpassing our levy goals in this area, and that is also true if you look at the cons uh, Consolidated Plan HUD goals in the CAPER. This program is funded by all of our different funding sources, but we are capped um, with federal dollars that can go in to support this program. And just to name, there's a lot more details in the caper about this program, but I wanted to name the agencies that we do support through this. For housing services, we support Lydia Place, Opportunity Council, Northwest Youth Services, YWCA, DBSAS, and Catholic Community Services uh, through specific programs they have. And through human and social services, those uh, agencies I mentioned also have human and social services programs that we fund. And in addition, we fund Whatcom Alliance for Healthcare Advancement, the Council on Aging, Sean Humphrey House, Bellingham Food Bank, Rebound, the Bellingham Child Care and Early Learning Center, Whatcom Literacy Council, Whatcom Dispute Resolution Center, Law Advocates, Mercy Housing Northwest, and Bridget Collins. And those are not just with levy dollars, those are with all the, the different funding dollars that support this program that are outlined in the CAPER. So that's all for the CAPER summary slides. I wanna just briefly give you a snapshot of where we are since we're two thirds of the way through our levy, our seven year levy period. I wanted to show you where we are with that. 
Um, here you can see the categories according to the administrative and finance plan that council approves. Um, and on the far right hand side, the total budgeted in that administrative and finance plan and the percentage allocated to each of those different categories. Um, and zeroing in on what is remaining to be committed just wanted to highlight those. So these funds are left to be allocated through future contracts yet through this current levy. Uh, there are some projects in the pipeline and others that are potentials based on preliminary conversations with agencies and we'll be releasing another NOFA later this year, notice of funding availability for agencies to apply for funds. And we're looking forward to more successful housing projects. I'm happy to take questions. Committee members? So thank you, Samia. Um, we actually noted uh, how well this plan has been working in our Justice Committee in being able to really see what we set out to do, be able to track our funds and look at our goals. And um, although it, um, a very packed <laughs> report to be able to really see are we meeting those in a, in a very simple and easy way. So uh, I think that's really helpful. I had a question, and this might, if it's where I just need to go get more education, please don't take the time to educate me here. But I. I saw the 300,000 that then goes back into home buyer for Colshan Land Trust and I thought whenever we originally, when Colshan Land Trust gets a hold of a property then it only increases, I think the, the person who sells can only get about 1% per year. So I would have thought that that would have kept it affordable and we wouldn't have to help somebody get into that house with a down payment. So I was just surprised to see 300,000 going already to what I would have thought should have been a permanently affordable house, but how is that permanently affordable if we're having to give down payment? Again, if it's education I need to go get, I can do that. But Yeah, that's simply, that gap is just really growing between the Such cost of gap. housing and what folks can afford. And so unfortunately there's additional subsidy that needs to be put in if they qualify for down payment assistance. It is paid back um, at sale. as at sale, right? So um, the Housing Finance Commission will get that money back and be able to roll it back into the program. Right now we're still sort of transferring to work with them so the city gets that money back okay. um, and then we're able to use it as program income and, and put it back into projects. So technically it's just a pot of money that's like invested, sitting, waiting till we get paid back and then we reinvest it back in but we're not, have, we're not kind of double putting money into affordable housing that way where we're the only time it might be double is if uh, we've supported the construction of a home ownership uh, whole okay. project and then in the future there's a resale and an individual needs to get down payment assistance to qualify Thank you. for that home. Yeah. Mayor Kelly. Um, just a comment. I, I don't take the opportunity often as often as I should to compliment our staff who does a, a wonderful job and I just want you to know that Tara and Sammy and the rest of the people that are working in community development have made this process so much more transparent and um, are, are, I don't know exactly what to say because transparent means everything to me. But the idea that we can pull this information up as April said and let you know how we're doing and let the community know how we're doing especially if we're going you know, into another round where we might be looking at um, another housing levy or an, another one-tenth of a percent for housing and services. So thank you, Samia. Thank you, Tara and Katie and whoever else I need to thank. But we're very lucky to have them. I, I concur. It, it is uh, much easier to have the conversations when people ask what we're doing around um, helping people with low income uh, with affordable housing um, and people who are in circumstances that they cannot get home. So this is really helpful. Uh, I am curious, and not that you have to answer this now, but if we could look at this in the future around what gaps we have that aren't funded um, and so that when we get to the conversation of our next levy, we're clear on what we actually might need um, and what we aren't able to take care of because I know there's a lot of things that we're doing but also what gaps can we not touch and what do we need to do to get there? Uh, we are underway with that process actually because right now we are building the next five-year consolidated plan and we just went through 
I know Dan, April, and Michael were participants in a community solutions work group, and we share we can share the gaps that we're already identifying with with you following today's presentation. And the, and the mayor, <laughs> yes, the mayor had have the community solutions work group yeah and you yeah. can you can send that to us because I know we're a little bit behind today so but I totally appreciate that that's being looked at uh, April and then uh, Michael also uh, on the yeah. first part of the plan I, I know we're required I'm, I'm assuming by maybe HUD to get citizen participation and that um, on here we didn't get any public comment this year so um, as we're looking at that consolidated plan update I think opportunities where it's not just checking a box to say we're getting it but clearly this this might not be the venue there where people are coming forward we might need to go whoever the consumers or the participants are trying to find better ways so we might make that as some projected goals and then see if we're able to meet those as goals as far as getting community participation I mean it may just be they think you're doing such an amazing job there's <laughs> but knowing knowing the Bellingham community they really like to participate so I will say that we do get more participation when we're setting goals yeah. and strategies than we do when we're reporting on our progress. Mm -hmm. Michael and Dan. Yeah, I think one of the nice things I like about um, how the, the Bellingham Housing Labor was set up is it did have targets, um, and we didn't predict our targets accurately. We underpredicted. We've had more success. But the question I want to ask is, when you show a comparison of, of um, home buyer program or rental assistance to the seven-year goal, is that the original goal, the goal is uh, outlined in the plan? Because we have then taken funding away from home buyer, 20 percent, we've decreased that funding by 20 percent, and we've added to the residential one. So in a certain sense, we should have increased our goal for residential, and, and maybe we're not outperforming so awesomely, but on the home buyer portion, we should have, in a certain sense, decreased our goal 20 percent below the 50 percent, so 40, and would show that we actually are outproducing that area. Same thing, we need to adjust the goals based on our new funding allocation. Is this the old goal or the new goal adjusted? So as far as I'm aware, the only place the goal was changed was in that rental assistance and supportive services, that it was adjusted up, upward, in fact, mm -hmm. early on. Um, and then funds were taken from that program to fund additional, or sorry, funds were taken from development right. to fund additional uh, services. But the home buyer program did not change. The budget allocation remains the same. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't the home buyer, it was from the production. Yeah. So I'm just, I think we should uh, adjust our our goals based upon the new funding allocation. Um, I think it'll show a very successful story, but I think we just need to be kind of realistic because we, we dropped that one, some of the funding levels significantly and raised others. Well, I, I think, can I just yep. go ahead, Kelly, respond if it's to, to Michael's? I think that what we found was that our housing was going to be more successful if it had supportive services. So I would encourage the council as we move forward with other um, initiatives that we keep our goals clear, which we're exceeding all of them, and then we, what we do is we allow flexibility to make sure there's enough flexibility to use the money where we need to. I think I know t in talking with Dan and with April, that we didn't have a, we, I don't think we considered that services, we were gonna need that service money. The 300,000 that just went into um, services allowed us to, to increase the number of beds we had available based on beds right now that we couldn't use because services weren't there for those beds. So I wouldn't want us to get too, I mean this is the, the big goal and we're making it and doing better. I don't really see a reason to adjust anything. Well, I do. If, if I spend twice as much on a program and I get twice as much benefit, then on my yield basis hasn't really gone up. Now, that's what I'm saying. When you adjust the funding, the effort in, you should also adjust what you are looking for in the results. I think when we do that adjustment, we're still going to have a great story to tell. I just want it to be accurate, that our yield really reflects effort. And I guess all I'd say, Michael, is do I, do I want people spending time doing that or making the goals clearer and potentially more accurate for the next time we go out. I mean, exactly. If I know my true yield based on new funding, I can, can make the next you projection. without changing the goals. Uh, Dan and then April. Yeah. Um, so I was on the team that <clears throat> put together the housing levy the, uh, in 2012, and we, we drastically underestimated um, what we would need for those supportive service dollars. 
Um, so I think you know, going forward, I think we have a better picture, clear understanding. It, it, it relates to retention, housing retention. So people can get into housing, but if they're unsuccessful in their housing because they're not supported with wraparound services, then they can fail in housing and then the, they wind up back on the street. Um, my question, I've got a couple quick questions here. So um, housing levy, community development block grant, home investment partnership, and general fund dollars total just shy of $6 million for um, housing and supportive services. Is this the complete financial picture that the city contributes to housing, homelessness, or is, or is there more? I recall a different number, but I could be off. Yes, this is everything that's under the housing and services program. Okay. And then on, for this slide, is, is the, is, uh, I'm trying to ask this the best way I can, is the number 882 for in, in the queue and completed, is that the, will that be the, the correct number? Uh, the one is a subset of the other. So the committed projects include those that are also completed. Oh, okay. So, so 573 is going to be the number that we're looking at. So we're still over the, the goal. Okay. And then um, for housing levy um, dollars, it says in the report that um, th for federal dollars, it increased from $6 leverage to $8 from 2015 to 2016. Are we seeing any kind of increase in housing levy leverage dollars? Yes. And I'm sorry, I don't have the old numbers for you, but yes, those have definitely increased over time. Thank you. Okay, um, just some notes as we move forward with our next goals. I, I think, um, again, this is this consolidated plan. I really like the process of it, and I'm, I'm hoping to use it in other um, ways of looking at things in the city so it can be more transparent and easier to follow. But the, I think one of the things is in when you put your program objectives forward, and if you're not constantly looking at those and wondering what your goals are, um, and that's where I like the flexibility, uh, you, you really... Um, you, you might lose, you might end up veering off and not following those. And I know that we constantly come back to those uh, with this document. And one of those is one of the things that the school district brought up to us is that, um, and we didn't set it in our program objectives, was disbursement of a lot of these housing types. And so I'm hoping that in the, I'm sure we, we've heard about that quite a bit at this point, but in the update of maybe that larger investment by, might be more worthy to take some pressure off of a school district or an area. Um, and then I'm looking through uh, one of our goals is promote cost-effective uh, sustainable design and I think sometimes definitions can be really important. What is sustainable? Is it just that it's going to be easy to repair and maintain or is it more looking at our climate action plan and, and how we're looking at sustainability in this community? And my last one which is super nitpicky and um, it, it's just I think government documents should always uh, try to take out the emotion <laughs> and I don't know if this is left over from something in the past and maybe I'm just being too picky but on page 30 um, it talks about uh, the grants from HUD having generally declined since the early 2000s and then it says comma without even considering inflation and I, I would just say without or without considering inflation I mean it just seems a little bit like poking and and I think that we just need to take that out of it so I apologize <laughs> for being down in the weeds on that, but I think it's important that we just keep things high level and state fact. Any other comments? Okay. Um, this was for information only. Tara and Samia, is there anything you need from us on this report? All right, thank you very much for your presentation and the committee.